Hello, hello everyone. I'm Rachel and this is Collective Gifts. Thanks for joining me today. As you know, my sister Noella is not here because you don't see her around. She is battling some symptoms, so she's taking some time to rest. But the devotionals must go on, right? The fast goes on. And so today is day nine. Is there compromise? Are you pursuing righteousness? As there's news going on of celebrities, um, passings, it kind of makes you think about the brevity of life. And for me, it always makes me question too, what kind of life am I living? You know, am I going forth in accomplishing the things that I want? Or, um, you know, what kind of life do I want to live and also be known for by my loved ones or the people of my influence? And you may be wondering that too. And so my question for you is what type of legacy do you have? What will you be passing on to your loved ones, you know, to people that you know, your friends, your family, coworkers, people at church, or maybe even people that watch you whenever you go to the market? You know, these, these people that know you, what will they remember you by? And what will you impart to them? And so all of us, we go forth in life and we strive to live that life of Pono or righteousness because that is our way of life. But there's gonna be times where we're on track, everything's always going good. And then there's those times where we kind of veer off, right? And it happens, we get busy with life or we kind of slowly but surely just drift away from doing things that we normally do. And so, you know, does your life reflect God's righteousness? Does it reflect what he intends for you to live? And so that's what always kind of gets us back on track. And this week we are covering living Pono with yourself. And so it's just more focusing on you, yourself, your heart attitude, your mindsets, the words that you speak. And so um, God's standards of righteousness, as we covered in the previous week, is something that we can't attain, we cannot earn, we cannot buy. It's something that the standard is so high and the price, it's priceless. You can't spend any money on it, that it can't be attained any way by our own strength. It can only be given to us by God who freely gives it to us and for us to receive it through salvation by the works of what Jesus did here on earth. And so we have his imputed righteousness unto us. And what that means is now we are made right with God. He sees no fault with us. And as a gift of that salvation, that righteousness that we receive, being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that is something that is a gift to us. It is, is something that we have stewardship over now. Our lives are no more our old man where we covered yesterday how there's a difference between being righteous and self-righteous. So we are no more self-righteous. We're no more self-focused on ourselves or going forth in our selfish desires. We're going forth in the life of righteousness that God calls us to do. And it's not something that's impossible because if it was, we wouldn't be created and we wouldn't have that gift of salvation. It is possible and God gives us principles to go forth by. And not only that, but we also have Holy Spirit here on this earth to help us to go forth in living a life of righteousness. And so... We can choose to live in our flesh and go forth in that self-righteousness, or we can choose to go forth in pursuit to pursue righteousness. And when we choose to pursue righteousness, we have everything that we need. All we have to do is just continue to remain open and humble to God to receive his help and seeking his guidance and wisdom in that. And um, living Pono is having that balanced relationship with God, being able to reach out to him and not thinking he's some distant, far off being who may or may not answer our prayers. No, he's always there with us. He's our heavenly father. He wants the best for us. He wants us to live our best life so that we can live our most blessed life. And so we want to continue to go forth in remembering that. And I want to share with you in James chapter 2 verse 24 it says you see that a person is considered righteous i like this part because it's saying you can see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone so we receive that righteousness by faith but just because we receive it by faith doesn't mean okay we can go back into the world and live and do as the world does operate in the world system no we no longer operate by the world system we operate by god's system 
And God's system is his, is his words, you know, is his godly principles that we learn and grow from. And so when we look at believers, you can tell their authenticity and also their spiritual growth by not the profession of their mouth. I'm a believer for, you know, 30, 40 years and, you know, I've seen God move. No, those are words. Your words have to align with your actions. In other words, the confession of your mouth must have corresponding actions. So you can't be all show and no go. You can tell a believer by the fruit that they bear. You know, are their words and actions aligning up in the same level? And also, are they aligning with the word of God? And so for us, if we're choosing to pursue righteousness, our life, our mindset, our heart attitudes, right? Our words, our um, actions, they're all going to reflect the word of God because we're, we are doers of the word and not hearers only. And so you can't just rely on what you believe alone. It requires works, right, for us to show forth um, that we are growing spiritually, that we have that living ponal life where we um, have a balanced relationship with God and also a balanced relationship with ourselves, which is owning up to our own life, taking responsibility for our life and applying what God wants us to. And so that's God's best for us. And so I want to ask you, you know, is there compromise in your life? You know, is there compromise in your life? Is one foot in the world and one foot in um, church with God? Or are you all in for God? And you can tell by your actions, maybe your mindsets, heart attitudes, your words that you're speaking, are they truly reflect reflecting that you are all in for Christ? Or are you still compromising in the world? And I want to read to you Proverbs 15, verse 9. This is the Amplified, which says, The way of the wicked is an abomination, extremely disgusting, and shamefully vile to the Lord. Isn't that powerful? Like you think, oh, God is love. Everything, you know, is just hunky-dory and his grace is upon us. But no, there's things that do not please him. And the way of the wicked is an abomination. That means it's vile. It's disgusting and shamefully vile to the Lord. He doesn't like that. He doesn't approve it. And he loves, but he loves him who pursues righteousness. He loves it when we go forth in righteousness. He loves it when we hunger after him and want to live a life that pleases him. He loves it when we want to go forth in pursuing righteousness, which means moral and spiritual rectitude. That means going forth in correction in every area of our life, as well as in every relations. And so that is a definition of living pono, right? It's going forth in balance in moral excellence, in harmony. And so we want to go forth in doing that because we choose to worship God. And if we profess to be his people, we worship him, then we can't be hypocrites. We can't say we're doing this and then act like the world because how is the world gonna know us as believers of Jesus Christ except through our love and being set apart and operating in a way that is unlike what they've seen and as we demonstrate that then we influence it to them and so for me that's the kind of life I want to live is one where it does reflect God where it does reflect that being a believer is not um, some boring thing it's not some killjoy thing where you know you're just suffering and making all these sacrifices and it's not blessed or satisfying you know that life of pono living for the lord is so joyful that's where when your life aligns with his word just like we've mentioned in the past devotionals of psalm 119 how it reflects um, God's word. So when there's any type of accusations that come by or criticisms, when your life aligns with the word, you can have that full peace, that full joy, because you're exactly where you need to be in God's intended will for your life. And there's nothing that can stick um, against you. And so um, going forth with, are you compromising? You know, is, is there something that you need to work on? We've discussed the self-righteous attributes yesterday and maybe there's something that was highlighted to you and maybe it's still resonating within you i know for me as an example in the past um i used to cuss and i thought it was cool to cuss because everyone cusses right and it was a self-expression of your anger too right like the more angry you are the more cussing you do well as i came to know god and know more about him i learned that 
that's not what he wants. God, he doesn't cuss. He uses words of life and blessing and power. Our words have power. And so he doesn't speak um, death and cursing on, upon us. And so if we're created to be like him, then we shouldn't do that as well. And so for me, it was something where um, Ephesians 4, where it talks about um, foul language shouldn't be coming out of our mouth. It made me really think about that. Like foul language, that's cussing. And how is the world going to know that you're different if you keep going forth and responding to um, different situations in anger and cussing or just speak speak cuss words out of your mouth just for the sake of it, you know, because it's part of your vocabulary and part of your lifestyle now. And so God had to work on me on that. And that was my compromise of being in the world. Maybe it might be um, there might be some things that you shouldn't be watching or listening to or activities that you shouldn't be doing and God's convicting you in your heart, telling you like, mm, you shouldn't be doing that because that does not please me. And as we go forth in Proverbs 15, it does say that it's, you know, going forth in those things, it is an abomination. It is disgusting. It is vile to him. It doesn't please him. It's shameful. And so if you choose to go forth in living a life of Pono, you want to get back and shift so that you can pursue righteousness and no longer compromise because when you're compromising anyway you only have that short-term gratification or satisfaction satisfaction and uh you know as you go forth in it though it doesn't feel right you don't feel complete or whole you know and so this is this is a word for you of just you know are you compromising in anything in area any area of your life are you lukewarm you know, God wants us hot and on fire for him. And so is there something that you need to adjust or change? And are you pursuing righteousness? Are you actively pursuing it? Is this something that you want to do? And so wherever you are in your faith walk, whether you're a baby believer or seasoned in your faith, you know, God wants us to continue to always go forth and searching our hearts and refine us and take us to higher levels where he takes us from glory to glory. And this is something where, you know, we always need to ask, just like during this devotional, I keep, um, you know, encouraging to reflect on asking yourself, is it Pono? What you're doing is, is your response Pono so that we can keep our hearts in check and also keep our lives in check so that we don't veer off of what God intends for us. And so if this is ministering to you and there is something that you're compromising in, then let's go forth in um, making that decision that, all right, today is the day, the time is now, that I'm no more going to wrestle with this behavior and I'm going to choose to pursue righteousness and going forth and asking Holy Spirit, what is it that you need to do? You know, what is the first thing? Is it just continuing to be cognizant of, is it Pono? Is it taking the next step of, all right, if you're removing that behavior, what are you going to do in replace of that? And so that's going to be more of a positive action. And so then that positive action then becomes part of your lifestyle. And as you go forth in that, if you end up slipping and falling, which can happen, right? Then you remember that it's a process. So you give yourself grace. You know, you can go back to God and you know, go forth in that process of repenting and seeking his forgiveness, receiving it and choosing then you're continue to step forward and continue to go, go forward, you know, keep going because the more you do, the more it becomes part of your lifestyle. Bad behaviors take 21 days, a cycle of 21 days to break it. Then it takes another cycle of 21 days to establish it as a, as a healthy habit and another 21 days for it to become permanent. And so this is something where it's not just going to be all at once. It's going to be a process. And for some people, it'll come easier than others. And that's okay. You know, wherever you are, God meets you where you're at. So continue to ask yourself, you know, is there a compromise? Are you pursuing righteousness? Is it Pono? Because we are going forth in living a life of Pono. And this takes us to always having to go back, search our hearts, and always being open to what God is revealing to us and speaking to us. All right, you all. Well, thank you for joining me today. God bless you. And I thank you for being part of this family fast. I thank God for continuing to give you insight, revelation, and understanding in what you need to do to go forth in no more living a life of compromise, but going forth living Pono and pursuing righteousness. And until next time, Shaloha.